Hey, I'm Stacy. And I'm Tom. And we are SM Dapson Art. We do geek inspired subculture. Florida, but make it weird. Florida, but make it weird. Paintings, um, surfboards, skateboards, stickers, t shirts, murals. She does all the painting, I build all the frames. Yeah, we make stuff look awesome. Woo! <laughs> Got it. <laughs>
And then it was a lot of research. <laughs> we're online, we're checking out YouTube videos. Um, this is working for them, how are they doing this? Learned from their model, but then tweaked it for ourselves. I had taken some pictures, Tom got onto the website to start applying for shows because at that point some people had bought some work, so we're like, oh, let's just dive in and try this. It was about 50-50 the first time we applied, like 50% we got in, probably by the skin of our teeth, and 50% were a big no. On everyone that said no, I wrote to those show organizers and said, hey, thank you for letting me apply, I appreciate this opportunity. Since I wasn't accepted, I'm wondering if you could give me some feedback on what I did wrong. When I first started uh, working with the wood, I was pretty much contacting my stepfather. I was like, hey, I need this board cut. We started the art business. We, at first, we just kind of took some boards and put it around a frame and it looked okay, but it didn't look professional. So once we sold a few paintings, I upgraded. I got a miter saw, table saw, what we do now is we actually put floating frames on the uh, handmade floating frames on the paintings and it it makes them just pop first year we spent twelve thousand dollars to start the business we weren't able to get a business loan, this was all paid in cash. And that $12,000 was just to get going. That was buying canvas and paint. Um, we bought a trailer. We paid show fees. So it was this huge financial investment and eating a whole lot of ramen. When it comes to gas prices, that, that that's a, an ouch. A full-size Silverado pulling up a 6x12 trailer tends to slurp up the gas. All of a sudden you're standing out there with your artwork surrounded by artists who have been doing this for 20 years and know what they're doing and are amazing and so I took to painting live at shows because then I can just paint. People enjoy watching that happen, they enjoy the process. I contacted our friend uh, that used to live in Pensacola who had made a spinning easel himself and I asked him if he'd be willing to give me the specs. And so he sent me a little sketch to work by and, and I tweaked it a little bit for what we wanted to use it for. And uh, ended up making it and it still every show we go to, that's the spinning easel that she uses. Tom always works the tent. He's much more social. We kind of work in tandem to make that happen. We're never guaranteed a paycheck, so it's always, you've got to put the energy in. You have to kind of diversify your income because sometimes one thing's going to sell and sometimes that's going to dry up completely. You get really comfortable with not being comfortable. Because sometimes sales are made very quickly, like in an art show someone comes in and they see a piece, they like it, and you're like, holy crap, you know nothing about this piece and you're leaving with it. We started moving into getting our collector's names. Like if they're gonna buy a piece and it's an original piece, we're gonna get their name, we're gonna get their contact information. And we always ask them like, if you decide to sell us, please reach out to us. But also, if we one day make it really, really big, we will reach out to you and let you know this is the time that you should probably insure this artwork and um, it's gone up in value because art is almost like a home. It always goes up in value. I mean, you never know when you go to shows if you're going to make a lot of sales. Some people are going to come in and love what you're doing, and some people are going to come in and freaking hate what you're doing so bad, and they have no qualms about telling you. <laughs> like, realistically, like, they come in and they'll be like, $800, is it made of gold? Like, that's the one we've gotten. I'm like, well, I do use gold and acrylic, so I think it looks awesome. You'll think whatever you think. So just decide that you love your work. If you don't love your work, then you're probably not ready to be showing it. We have a, a three time deciding factor on every show that we do. We'll do a show three times to decide if that area or that community is 
our people. One thing we've gone with is the paintings were never ours to begin with. They already have like are fated to whatever home they're going to go into. We don't know who that is yet, so we could hold on to a painting for two years and it's going to find a home eventually. When it comes to TikTok, I am pretty much the goofball. I do random random videos just try to you know get my face out there online was a big thing for us and a lot of like different social groups on like Facebook Instagram all of that like they were some of my earliest supporters and then when it comes to other social medias like when we created our business Facebook page people started seeing stuff that they liked and then you know they share and it's a extreme multiplier for your reach Inspiration exists, but it has to find you working. Sometimes the work happens before the inspiration happens. Like sometimes I will start a piece and I'm like, I am just not feeling this at all. Then you get five minutes in and then you're kind of like, okay, well, I can keep going. And then eventually you're like, oh, well, actually I really like this now. And this is what it means to me now that I've gotten to this point in it. If you never step up outside your comfort zone, to either try new things or go new places or learn new things. If you don't push yourself, you can never be better. For me with doing commissions, at first I was say yes until you can afford to say no. Because a commission forces you outside your comfort zones. But I always approach it from a therapeutic standpoint. I love using symbolism and art, even if it looks like a playful, crazy piece. I'm usually mixing something in there that has a much deeper meaning. It is all taking this idea and getting to blend two people's consciousness together. And then other strange stuff like uh, I tried cutting my fingers off once with a table saw. I was very scared that when I went into the hand specialist that they were going to tell me, all right, we're just going to have to take it off the knuckle, your SOL. But it ended up a very bright learning experience that uh, I am a lot more cautious and a lot more safe now while working around anything that has a spinning blade. A big thing for anybody that's working in woodwork, safety. I know a lot of people use a table saw and they'll take the uh, take the safety shields off and the liners off and everything. Uh, don't. <laughs> uh, those things are there for a reason and without them you will almost or possibly lose fingers. is probably the main one that shows up a lot for me. And so I'll balance that with other creatures, but I always come back to the octopus. The octopus is huge in symbolism for me. For me, like that's a huge symbol of motherhood and family and personal sacrifice. But also, they're flexible, they're highly intelligent, um, they're able to adjust to whatever situation they're put into to solve a problem. It really started calling to me after having Tommy. Almost every single one of my pieces has something that he added on to there, not because I wanted him to. So I've learned a lot of corrections, um, not in correcting him so much, but in correcting the artwork. There's a giant octopus sitting in my hallway that has Sharpie over the top of it. Sometimes it is waiting until he goes to bed. If he needs a lot of attention that day, if that's kind of where he's at, it's okay. He's going to go to bed, and then this is the time to really dig into the artwork and he's really into the art. It was one of the first things he started saying was art. He knows what art is. He loves the different colors, orange especially. Um, nothing comes easy, but it makes it really, it, it feels more like living for me. 
If you're a significant other of an artist, make sure that you support them. It's so great to have a partner and someone that supports the work no matter what and is willing to do what needs to be done to make that work get out there in the world. It's a different life with the business that Stacy and I created. It, it's kind of perfect. I love this being a family business, you know. I think it's cool we get to raise our son in this. I get to be on the road with my husband. All in all, it's fun. It's a freedom that I had no idea about until we jumped into and now I wouldn't have it any other way. Zoom out just a little bit. Oh yeah, perfect. Cause I might put the black bars on top. <laughs>